In this video, we will work with the apex splice tray variations as well as routing and finalizing the closure. The tools needed for installing apex include a can wrench, optional 3 8 inch by 7 16 inch ratchet wrench, cable prep tools, splicing tools, safety glasses, and all other safety equipment required by your organization. There are multiple Apex trays available for use depending on application. First, we will review the Apex splice tray components. The clear polycarbonate cover is reversible on most Apex splice trays. If it has a square end, it is a reversible cover. The clear cover engages tight to the splice chips and edges. The material works well for Sharpie or label designations to be applied. The entry to all Apex splice trays is designed for two position tie wraps to be applied and leave room for foam or felt not to interfere with the cover. There are supplied tie wraps or other retention options based on the splice tray ordered. The edge of the tie wrap entrance is notched so the first tie wrap is simply installed in one slot and routed around the outside of the tray secured in the appropriate notches. This tray entrance can also accept AFL's Advanced Fiber Retention Systems V-Clip which can be used for loose tube or ribbon applications. The splice modules on the splice tray are field removable or movable if desired for your specific needs. When a splice tray is preloaded in the apex closure from the factory, it will come fully loaded, meaning all openings on the splice tray are filled with splice modules. There are part numbers for an apex splice tray half loaded, where 50% of the openings have modules installed as well as empty with no factory installed splice modules. A part number for the splice module sold in bulk is on the Apex spec sheet on aflglobal.com. Each splice module allows for triple stack of any manufacturer's single sleeve. They will also be retained and secured in this module, 18 single fibers per splice module. Quad stack of AFL low profile single splice sleeves, 24 single fibers per splice module. Double stack of ribbon mass splice sleeves at 12 per splice. 144 per splice module, 250 micron PLC splitters 1x2 through 1x32, up to 6 devices per splice module, 250 micron single channel WDM optical add drop MUX devices or OADM, up to 6 devices per splice module. Apex splice modules allow for mix and match of any of these applications within the same module or splice tray, making Apex a universal splice tray. The splice trays all have molded locations where individual splice modules can be installed. The number of positions will vary depending on Apex family splice tray. To remove a splice module from an Apex tray, find the edge of the module flush with the edge of the tray location opposite the side where there is a gap. Hold the splice module where you can apply pressure to slide the module toward the gap to be released. Turn the tray over and disengage the two lock pin locations. This can be done one at a time or both together to release the module. A pair of shears or another small point object can be used to release the module. The release module can be moved or stored. To install an apex splice module in an empty slot, look at the bottom of the module to see which way the lock tabs are pointing. Place the module in the opening with the lock tab hinge in the direction you are sliding towards. Press down and slide into place and the lock tabs will engage. Confirm the module is fully engaged. Apex splice trays have protected routing options between each splice module if needed. Standard Apex splice trays come with adhesive foam and tie wraps. All other methods of fiber retention are individual kits sold separately. This includes foam retention, silicone spiral wrap, transition tube, mesh and mesh kits, and AFRS V-clips and ribbon fiber management. When securing loose tube cable buffer tubes into an apex tray with the supplied retention material, pre-cut the adhesive foam into eight pieces. Center cut the foam lengthwise and then divide each strip into four pieces. Preload the splice tray with tie wraps in both levels of retention. It is possible to have two tie wraps pass in the same opening. Ideally, each buffer tube should be retained individually for future needs. It is possible for multiple tubes to be secured on each tray as shown here. Loose tube can also be retained by the AFRS V-clip as shown here. 
Multiple tubes can be installed in one clip with no foam or felt needed, and best of all, no tie wraps. Hard matrix or non-matrix like spiderweb ribbon will enter the apex splice tray in multiple ways. For all of the methods we will review, all use tie wraps except the AFRS. First, preload splice tray with tie wraps in both levels of retention. It is possible to have two tie wraps pass in the same opening. If transport tube is secured to the splice, try using with tie wraps. The adhesive foam supplied with the splice tray or felt can be used for additional retention. When using AFL foam retention, simply wrap the foam over the ribbons. Each foam will hold up to 288 spiderweb ribbon fibers or 144 12 fiber flat matrix on edge. Ensure all ribbons are inside the foam. Tighten the tie wraps to secure, but not to attenuate. Fiber should have some movement after tie wraps are secure to ensure no attenuation. Silicone spy wrap can be secured with foam retention. Mesh around ribbon can be secured with foam retention or an AFRS V-clip. The AFRS V-clip can be used to secure meshed 12 fiber hard matrix or non-matrix ribbon like AFL spiderweb ribbon fiber. Each V-clip holds 864 fibers of spiderweb ribbon of non-matrix ribbon and up to 104 fibers of hard matrix. The hard matrix ribbon enters the splice tray on edge for ease of routing in tray. A deep tray is available for some apex closures, which facilitates 24 fiber ribbon without the need to split until the splice module. X3 square trays can be ordered with ASC bulkheads on the end of the splice tray opposite the hinge attachment to allow for easy test port access in WDM or similar applications. Other passive accessories are available and discussed in a future video. Most fiber except for hard matrix ribbons will route the same in an apex splice tray. The tray is designed to hold a service loop of fiber and then splice. There are many routing alternatives when stacking one, two, three, or four single splices, as well as variations in ribbon splicing. Any module can be used or removed based on the need of the application. One consideration applicable for all fiber splicing is the routing of fibers at the end of the splice tray. If you are not filling the tray completely, leave the three outermost splice sleeve slots at the splice modules on the far ends of the splice tray open for future expansion. When routing the edges of Apex, do not take the fiber from a splice sleeve and route them away from the splice tray end. This prevents potential unneeded stress and risks breaking the fiber. The preferred routing for end modules of Apex is to route them away from the closer end of the tray like this. The middle modules in the larger tray can be routed in either direction. Hard matrix ribbon in a standard splice tray should be waterfall spliced. In this configuration, fibers enter and route upwards, splice and then exit with no slack stored in the tray. This prevents fiber damage from edge-to-edge -edge friction on hard matrix ribbon. Once the tray is spliced, adjust the slack fiber or tubes in the tray and around the spline, fully secure each at the splice tray entrance. Inspect that all fibers are routed under the tray tabs and all fibers meet minimum bend radius. Install the cover and ensure no fibers are out of place and label according to the local standards and repeat until all trays are spliced. There is a dimension on the apex length table which is listed as sheath to tray distance. Trays must be built in sequence from tray one to the last tray to be installed. This is useful in high count ribbon splicing or any time when two splicing technicians need to work on the same closure. All splice trays in inner basket must be first removed. Take fibers straight from the CAU, lay them over the basket and mark the fibers or tube at the sheath to tray distance. Protect the fibers as they lay over the basket edge. Attach the fibers, mesh, or tubes to the splice tray at the mark, but do not fully tighten to allow the fiber to be adjusted when installed. Splice and close the tray as shown above. Bring the tray back to the basket and cross first at the crown of the basket and then behind the spline. Adjust the slack in the splice tray and basket as applicable and then fully secure the fiber to the splice tray. 
engage the tray to the spline, raise and lower to confirm. Secure fiber, mesh or tubes to the basket using appropriate methods such as Velcro, cable ties or AFRS V-clip. Now that we've walked through the process, let's go through and double check our work. Confirm the routing in the basket and tray while opening and closing the splice trays. Confirm the routing when you open and close the inner basket, if applicable. Confirm there are no kinks or a sharp bend of the fiber in the basket. Confirm all the trays are secure on the spline and properly labeled. Attach two Velcro straps with soft side up through the slots and secure the splice trays. Install the strap widthwise first. If a second strap is provided, then install this strap lengthwise. Confirm all small diameter bushings are installed prior to tightening gel compression screws. Confirm all empty ports have an orange port plug installed. Confirm all gel compression screws are fully engaged. Confirm the base of apex and the o-ring are free from dirt, debris, and contamination. Apply a new thin coat of apex grease on the top and inside of the o-ring to prevent sticking when inserting the apex into the dome. This must be done each time the closure is entered. Align the tab and slip the dome on. Engage the lock ring latch and secure the lock ring. Note the orientation of the lock ring so the handle or hinge will not interfere with the mount insert if pole or wall mounting. Secure the lock ring handle to the lock ring. Apply lock tag if desired. The final step when installing any sealed fiber splice closure is to verify the build integrity with a flash test. Apply 5 psi max of air to the flash valve on the dome. Inspect the base and ports for leaks with a spray of soapy water. If there are no apparent bubbles, the closure passes. If bubbling occurs, remove the dome, check the ceiling wedges, check the CAU brackets and hose clamps, and check the o-ring is clean and greased.